My name is Reverend Nick Carter. My name is Rabbi Danny Lehman. Danny, um, we're in the midst of uh, Jewish High Holy Days. Um, uh, tomorrow is Yom Kippur. Uh, what, is, what are the High Holy Days and why, it, why is this important to Jews? Well, this is actually the middle of the 10 days of repentance, which start with Rosh Hashanah last week and culminate in Yom Kippur tomorrow. So it's really a 10-day process of repentance, introspection, um, forgiveness, and Yom Kippur is the Day of Atonement. It's actually a day, while solemn, that also has the side of it which is quite joyous because there is a conviction and a belief that God will in fact forgive us for our sins, um, especially those sins between humans and God. Sins between humans and humans need to be um, dealt with directly on the human level, uh, and our tradition reminds us that don't think that Yom Kippur is going to get you forgiveness for those things that you do to other people uh, that need to be forgiven. Um, and so I want to ask your forgiveness, Nick, for anything that I might have done this past year. There's a tradition that we ask forgiveness from people leading up to Yom Kippur so that we're not relying on Yom Kippur as the source of forgiveness for those sins that we have to ask forgiveness well, I'm, from our I'm, fellow human beings. I'm humbled by that, and I, I forgive you, and I guess I have to turn around and ask for your forgiveness. Uh, <laughs> Forgiven. <so. laughs> uh, tell me, uh, now, one of the images that is associated with this time is that God has a big book in which God records things. Uh, talk a little bit about that and what that means uh, in this time. Yeah, we say throughout this 10-day period that we um, hope that God will inscribe us, and on Yom Kippur we pray that God will seal us mm -hmm. in the book of life. Mm -hmm. So there's this notion that this is a judgment period, and it's related to God the Creator, the Creator of the universe, which is celebrated on Rosh Hashanah as the uh, celebration of the creation of the world, the creator is also the judge. In other words, the being that creates also has to assess, because creativity mm -hmm. is um, often a process that involves assessment. You know, is this good? Is this what I want? Is this um, what I hoped for? And so there's this sense that you stand before the ultimate judge, and it is a, a period of real trepidation. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, there are all kinds of concerns about uh, being involved in uh, any kind of litigation or court case. You know, this is a time which uh, you don't want to be involved in, in those kinds of judgments because ultimately the, the judge of all judges is watching very carefully during this period. Um, so there is a sense of, of real anxiety uh, that the life uh, stands in the balance. Now, is it, a, is it a judgment for a fixed period of time or all time? Well, it's usually considered to be uh, life uh, for the next year, but of course, if you don't make it uh, <laughs> and you're not inscribed of the Book of Life, that's a kind of final judgment. Yeah, yeah so you want to get there, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, but every year it's a kind of renewal of that process. Um, and I was, I was curious about uh, Christianity and whether there's a, um, a focus on forgiveness at a particular time of year, because this year in the Jewish calendar is like forgiveness city. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously forgiveness is a very important theme for Christians. Um, Jesus begins his ministry by saying, repent and believe in the gospel. Um, the, the kingdom of God is at hand. Uh, and consistently through his teachings and preaching, forgiveness comes up a time and time again. Uh, in the Christian calendar, um, particularly in terms of, of an observance, the time of um, reflection, penitence, um, uh, uh, is usually in Lent. Before uh, Easter. Before Easter, the 40 days, uh, uh, add Sundays, 46 days before, before Easter. That is the penitent time. It is the time of self-reflection, of discipline and preparation for uh, for Good Friday and, and Easter, uh, uh, and starting with uh, Ash Wednesday, um, uh, and um, uh, and of course then uh, 
Shrove Tuesday just before that, um, which everyone knows in terms of Mardi Gras and those sorts of things. But then there's a, the, the beginning with, with uh, Ash Wednesday, a real sense of beginning of introspection um, and, uh, and forgiveness becomes then a major theme in the midst of this, of, of seeking some form of reconciliation. And is there a, is there a uh, expectation that people actually forgive one another in a not formal in, way? Not in, a, not in a, a formal way. I mean, we do, you know, every time we pray the Lord's Prayer, they say, we, we, we say, uh, forgive us our debts right. as we forgive those who, who uh, are debtors. Right. Um, and uh, so it is a weekly uh, recitation, uh, or for some practicing Christians, even more often, that they, some is, will say the Lord's Prayer every day. Mm, yeah. um, uh, and so there is an orientation of the heart that comes with that, but not a, um, a, a ritual observance of a particular day right. li like uh, Yom Kippur. I mean, it's interesting. In the Jewish tradition, there's even a requirement that if you sinned against someone who passed away, you need to actually go to the grave and request forgiveness. And you're supposed to go with witnesses so that you've made this oh, really? public yeah. attempt at least uh, to seek forgiveness even if the person's no longer with us. Well, the, there is a, uh, it's, I mean, it's an interesting theological theme of, of seeking reconciliation. Right. Um, and the ability to forgive and be forgiven that comes uh, with a certain freedom and a right relationship with God mm -hmm. and a right relationship with, with, with others. Um, um, the, uh, f when when uh, Yom Kippur finishes, uh, how, does it, how does it end? Uh, and where, where do you, what's your sort of spiritual place, place. when you finish this, this, uh, this, this day? Um, there is a kind of uh, spiritual high at the end. The actual ritual is that the shofar, the ram's horn, is blast, one long blast, uh, which signals the end of Yom Kippur. And um, it's the only time in the Jewish calendar in which there is a, um, an additional service uh, added on at the very end of the day. Hmm. Uh, it's the only day that has this extra service, and the service is called Ni'ilah, which means the, the shutting of the gates, the locking of the gates. So right before the gates of repentance and atonement are closed, right before that, you have the surge of kind of religious energy, and you have this whole service that culminates in saying, you know, the Lord is God, and hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You have these declarations made sort of at a high-pitched voice, and that then the blast of the shofar, and that ends the service on this kind of um, almost jubilant feeling that, you know, we've made it and that, you know, God is a forgiving God and uh, we will be inscribed in the Book of Life. Wonderful. And then there's a break fast. It's a 25-hour fast, so it's uh, uh, one of uh, two fast days in the year that have you know, a whole day of fast. And is it complete fast? Complete. No drinking, no eating, nothing. No water? No water. Yeah, which is not as hard as people think, yeah. <laughs> especially for those of us who have reserves. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Danny. Uh, thank you for, for joining us for this session of the Rev and the Rav. Uh, we look forward to having you with us next time.